What's going on there, folks? Good evening. This is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Saturday night. It is October 1st, 2022. It's about 1025 p.m. Central Time out here in Texas. Uh, got a, a lot of activity to talk about here tonight, uh, including a pretty large solar flare that just popped off here within the last hour. Uh, this one peaked up almost at the X flare category. Uh, notice this uh, signature up here. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. And it came in very close to the X flare level. I believe this peaked out around the uh, uh, M flare category, M8. Either way, uh, definitely things picking up pretty rapidly out here on the sun. Let's see what we got. An M8.7 was the uh, peak current on that uh, solar flare. Looks like earlier there was a 5.8 as well. Things really ramping up pretty closely to the X flare category. This is all coming from AR3110, which is kind of on the northwestern side of the sun looking pretty uh, spectacular far as that image goes from that solar flare. Uh, it did kick up a global DRAP absorption uh, map here. It was pretty well blocked, uh, blacked out on the sunlit side of the earth a little bit ago. Since then, it's been calming down a little bit. But uh, I still think we are uh, starting to get back into that active stage far as solar flares go. Um, right now, 99% chance of a sea flare. M flare at 40% chance and a 10% chance for an X flare. And there's a couple probability sunspots out there that we are watching. That includes uh, 3110, which is the culprit in producing the M flare. Looks like 3113 is also growing. And there's a new sunspot development here on the northeastern side of the sun, uh, 3112. That one's uh, pretty big, and it will be uh, looking to uh, show its face here in the coming days as that is rotated into view. A couple sunspots down here on the southwestern edge as well, but uh, I think these couple sunspots that are facing us are the ones we need to watch uh, pretty closely. Here's the most recent um, updated map showing a little bit of complex magnetic fields over here. Look at that blue, uh, red. A lot of different intermixing there of the magnetic fields from the new sunspot. And of course, 3110 over here, uh, where we're seeing some of that uh, high category M flare um, looking pretty awesome as well, far as the dynamics go. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, let's go back here real quick. 3110 is, See what we got for the magnetic field. Looks like a beta class. It was assigned on the 23rd. This may need to be updated. Uh, they do have 3112 listed up for a potential uh, with that beta gamma delta class. That is massive sunspot. Look at that beautiful image there of the complex magnetic fields. And there's a bunch of them, a lot of complex uh, issues going on here and that could be a likelihood of some x flaring here in the near future so we will watch that pretty closely there is a 10 percent chance for an x flare but as this thing kind of grows and evolves uh, we do have a, a chance of seeing that stronger flare here a uh, real soon uh, okay notice on the three-day geomagnetic field forecast no g2 class storm looks like that thing has missed us completely of course, last night we did see a little bit of elevated conditions, but nowhere near even the G1 storm. Uh, they had forecast a G2 storm, but it looks like things have kind of uh, disappeared. And unfortunately, that does happen when you're dealing with space weather. Um, there is still a possibility of some unsettled conditions here over the next couple nights as far as seeing uh, potential auroras at the higher latitudes. But right now, things are calm. They're green. Not a whole lot going on far as that goes in space weather. But no doubt, we'll watch the uh, threat for solar flares increase um, uh, going forward. All right, earthquake activity. Uh, I want to start over here with Yellowstone National Park. Still swarming. Uh, in fact, if you look here over at the Maple Creek area, most of the swarming has been kicking up within the last couple hours. There's quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up there. 
in the Yellowstone area. All these little spikes here indicated a uh, small microquake. There's a couple uh, bigger quakes there in the mix as well. Uh, let's see if the USGS is reporting those. Stand by for just a second. All magnitudes. We'll zoom in up here to the uh, Yellowstone map. Most of the time um, on the weekends, these guys aren't going to show anything unless it's uh, above 2.5. And it looks like the latest quake was a 2.8, um, 1339 UTC time. That's over at the Hebgen Lake area. So uh, let's check it out. 1339 UTC time. That's going to be, well, 1339. Wow. Let's see if we got it over here. 1339. Guess it's somewhere in this mix of mess little cluttered mess there of the seismograph station so they haven't really got the uh, newer activity listed up here that's a I believe that's kind of getting up there in the magnitudes uh, I believe that's close to a 2.5 if not above and some other smaller quakes in there as well notice the signature showing up uh, across a good portion of the western north uh, northwestern portion of Yellowstone National Park ongoing swarm here it's been uh, we'll probably do a tally maybe tomorrow or on Monday, see how many quakes we've had over the last month or so at Yellowstone, because it's been pretty consistent far as this swarming activity uh, goes. It's been pretty active. All right, see what we got here for the West Coast. Um, nothing going on in the Pacific Northwest, and I've come to the conclusion that the USGS, the PNSN network, does not issue earthquakes um, for that area, even though they're happening. They just don't list them out there for the public. Up here in Northern California, check this out. I may have to get back home here real quick. Got a swarm of earthquakes going on around Mount Lassen. Looks like there's a 2.7, a pretty shallow earthquake. Uh, 1.6, fairly deep there at 7 kilometers. And a couple other smaller quakes there in the mix. Right there at Mount Lassen in Northern California. It looks like it's just on the southwestern flank, western flank area. Uh, again, down there between one kilometer and 7.9 kilometers at um, Mount Lassen. So definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, let's see what we got for the rest of California. Not a whole lot going on in the uh, Cascadia as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, we'll get to the trimmer map here in a little bit. Things a little spotty once you head down south here. Looks like Ridgecrest, uh, Ridgecrest area getting in on some activity. Uh, let's bring up the U.S. faults here. And a couple earthquakes down here in the last hour. Doesn't look like anything major, just mostly microquakes. <clears throat> and it looks like there's a little bit of activity here right on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, um, right around the Banning area. But the remainder of this section here looks pretty quiet. But uh, either way, it's kind of lighting up a little bit on both sides of the plate boundary. Might have to watch the West Coast pretty closely. All right, let's back out of here. Not a whole lot going on through the rest of the country, folks. A little spotty. Uh, same for the rest of the area. South America, not a whole lot of movement today. Just some fours there from earlier this morning. We did see an uptick in earthquake activity down here in the South Sandwich Islands. Looks like uh, some movement earlier this afternoon, including a 4.6 earthquake into the subduction zone there at about 45 kilometers deep. Whole lot of development going on out here, folks, and a lot of it's got to do with that uh, earthquake swarming we're seeing up here in the North Atlantic Ocean. Looks like things have kind of calmed down a little bit after, oh, about a week or so. 10 days of some pretty good increasing activity. Let's get a total tally here of the last seven days for this region. About 87 earthquakes listed up here on the map. So pretty good swarm, although, Seems like once we had that 6.0 uh, last night, things kind of mellowed out a little bit with only a couple fours there in the mix. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor that, though. That activity's got me quite curious. Uh, let's see, West Coast lighting up. Uh, quite the movement stir up over here around the Indonesia area. Also off the coast of Japan, seen some movement, 5.0. And also over here, 5.7 kicking off earlier. Uh, this morning time frame. So a little bit of activity around the Philippine plate and also down here along the Kermadec Trench. Things kind of lighten up a little bit. 
uh, looks like uh, in the morning time, uh, earlier this morning, a couple of fours out there in the area. Uh, let's see. Let's check out the Hawaii area. Of course, we've been swarming there. I kind of skipped that this morning. I was just kind of uh, barely waking up. Had to do an update super early. I've been traveling here a lot and uh, forgot, uh, forgot to cover the Hawaii area. It looks like the swarming around Mauna Loa has uh, died off a little bit. Let me see if... It looks like we've only had one earthquake uh, earlier this afternoon and some uh, much earlier movement in the morning time. But it looks as though, for now, it looks like things are kind of calming down a little bit. Uh, let's check out the HANDS uh, USGS notification system, which is right here. And see if we got anything put out here for the HVO. Kilauea, Kilauea, it's all continuing. No, no new updates, folks, or advisories on Mauna Loa. I'm sure that will be brought up in the weekly update for Mauna Loa um, here in a couple days. So we'll wait for that. But uh, no new notifications put out uh, from the USGS. So apparently they're not too concerned about it. Just a couple, a little bit of earthquake swarming, right? All right, uh, let's see. Let's give a really quick uh, double check here of the California region once again. Yeah, a little bit of spotty activity. Again, Mount Lassen, uh, wow, that's kind of crazy. You're going to have to watch that pretty closely. It's been a while since we've seen any type of uh, swarming at uh, um, Mount Lassen. Oh yeah, trimmer. Let's go ahead and check trimmer real quick. I'm just kind of off of it. I'm ready to ready to be back home and back at the home base. But uh, yeah, got a couple more days out here. Uh, let's see, Oregon. Wow. So we still have a pretty good swarm kicking up here. Five hundred and seventy six epicenters just today. Holy smokes! That's a lot of trimmer activity. And this has been the area that we're watching. It's been like this for. Oh, about 10 days now, 12 days confined to the area that you see here on the map. This is pretty much a center portion of the Cascadia. Um, and there's no doubt there's stress building and uh, kind of building up on that subduction zone. I've always seen on a couple, I've seen on a couple different maps here that they expect uh, when the Cascadia subduction zone goes, if it's a big one, uh, it may tr it may start right off the coast of Oregon within this area where the hand is. So kind of interesting that we're seeing all this trimmer activity kicking up within that zone. Just a little odd. We don't see these uh, trimmer events confined to this area for so long. Normally it's up north or kind of down south here in Northern California. So we're watching that pretty closely, folks. Have a good night. I'm going to bounce off here. I'm, uh, I think I'm ready for bed. Had some fun out here in the Texas area today. Ate some good food. Texas always has good food. But uh, all right, we'll chat at you guys sometime tomorrow morning. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe out there. Take care.